All right. Three, two, and one. Welcome to the World Cup Coast to Coast podcast brought to you by thelines.com. Coming to you from the U.S. West Coast, Josh Lander, joined by my mate across the pond, as always, for the 12th day in a row. Dan, how are you, sir? Yeah, very well. Thank you. Celebrating England's path to the round of 16. So celebrations on this side of the Atlantic and, of course, celebrations on your side as well after you guys beat Iran 1-0. So, yeah, we're just in a really good mood in this episode and long may it continue. Yeah, yeah, we're we're feeling good today. Uh, a lot more, uh, you know, cheery than we would be if uh, some different results had occurred yesterday for England and the U.S. Pulisic uh, sacrifices his ch- his future children uh, on the line by getting hit right in the in the uh, part where it hurts the most down south. Uh, we'll see if he's available for next game, as he he was slightly hospitalized, but I, I think that was more precautionary. Either way, in this one, we are finishing up uh, the, the group stage matches here. Dan finishing things uh, with the Friday matches. This is day twelve as I said, of the World Cup. Make sure to like and subscribe to that page. Dan and I are bringing you videos each and every day that there is World Cup action. Uh, as soon as we get into these knockout stages as well, there's going to be plenty to choose from. Uh, go ahead and also head to thelines.com. Dan puts all the picks and, and uh, articles that he has up there about the World Cup this year. Also have our odds finder tool, as always. You can use that to make sure you're shopping those lines for this World Cup to the best of your ability. Get all that juice that you can back from these U.S. sports books. Dan, I'm going to go ahead and kick things off with the 11 a.m. Pacific Coast uh, out here in the U.S. time games on Friday, the 2nd of December. Uh, that would be Serbia, Switzerland, Brazil, Cameroon. Set us up with the um, with the, the sort of permutations that are alive right now for each of these four teams. Sure. So Brazil, as we know, are already in the round of 16. If they win or draw, they'll top the group. If they lose and Switzerland win, that top spot will be decided by goal difference. So Switzerland will be out if they're beaten by Serbia, but they'll go through if they win. Should Serbia, sorry, should Switzerland take all three points? As I say, their goal difference would be in the mix between them and Brazil. If Brazil lose, hang on, if Switzerland draw, then they would be through if Brazil win or draw. If both Cameroon beat Brazil and the Swiss take a point, the second place would be decided by goal difference. While Serbia and Cameroon both need to win to have a chance of progress, if both win their matches, then second place would be decided between those two on goal difference. So to sort of simplify it as much as we can, Brazil are in. It's one from the other three. Switzerland are in the driving seat. They need a point. But if Serbia and Cameroon both win, it's all up for grabs in terms of who gets the bigger win out of those two nations. Right. So if you're Serbia and Switzerland win... Uh, at, at all costs, I would say. I mean, don't don't leave things to chance is really what we're saying here. I don't know that there's there's going to be too much in the way of uh, game theory that we can use to say, oh, uh, a, a tie might be likely. I don't know that either of those teams in Serbia or Switzerland are going to feel comfortable resting at any point without getting uh, three to come out of that and, and not worry about the fate of the other game uh, quite as much, right? So, uh Either way, I just love to watch Dan have to go through all of that. That's why I asked him to do that at the beginning of the video. Uh, Hopefully you're able to follow that. We're going to kick things off uh, with the Serbia game, right, Dan, here as we have them uh, taking on this feisty, feisty team uh, in the uh, Swiss uh, as well, who who seem pretty composed. So uh, the Serbians looked really good. I'll just read it off here, the three-way money line. Serbia plus 160, slight, slight favorites. A draw is plus 230, and the Swiss are at plus 185. Uh, So I I guess where do you start with Valentine? Value, which of these teams do you feel a bit more comfortable backing, if either? Um, to be honest, I'd probably go with Serbia in this group. I know yeah. they threw away a 3-1 lead against Cameroon, but they at least showed they've got plenty of goals in them. Switzerland, by their own account. I mean, we said weeks before that Switzerland were never going to come with a free-flowing attack. They're never going to really wow people in terms of their World Cup performance. They are very solid, they're very dependable, which is Part of the reason why they got to the World Cup in the, the first place, topping that group, which included Italy. So in a game where both teams need to win, and I'm looking at the odds and there's very little difference, I'm looking at Serbia because they've got more in their arsenal. So, you know, Serbia have been a bit unfortunate, actually. I mean, they held Brazil for 45 plus minutes. And then, as I say, they threw that advantage away against Cameroon. So they have had certain glimpses of what they can do. And I feel that this game is always going to define the group for me and I feel that Serbia and I back them to finish in the top two anyway so I'm sort of sticking to that and I feel in this kind of winner take all scenario not quite winner take all for Switzerland but as you said they can't really 
um, afford to rest on their laurels. But even so, I'd still be back in Serbia. And I feel it might be quite a tight game as well. So again, the goals you're looking at over 2.5 is plus 100. But I actually like the look of a Serbia win and over... To, actually, no, under 2.5 goals, sorry. Under 2.5 goals. So under 2.5 goals is minus 125. But Serbia win and under 2.5 is plus 450. And I think that's where the real value is. I, I promised the viewers we did not talk about our picks before the game, but that's my, without question, my favorite pick. Like, not even, there's nothing else that that I feel nearly as great about. And I get here, plus 475 is the best I can find at the U.S. sports books using that odds finder tool on the lines.com. But I immediately, as soon as I was looking at this game before we, we started recording um, and, and last night, I, I immediately was already scrolling immediately down to what Serbia win and under looked like. I mean, Serbia win and under one and a half is, uh, very, very ballsy, um, but that's plus 750. Um, and, and I will tell the viewers that, that, was, uh, that that's something that I felt great about today with the Australians. I took the Australians to win an under two and a half, which worked out. Congrats to the Socceroos, who are likely to be drunk already, I imagine, if not uh, by tonight. <laughs> but yeah, the, 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 the under in this game, the Swiss, they looked really, really good against the Brazilians. I called them feisty for a reason. Um, they've always played the, the, the Brazilians very well. They don't seem to have the same fear in them, but they do pack it in. Um, and, and I don't know that they're going to pack it in quite as much as they have, um, you know, so far in this tournament uh, and the way that they played the, the Brazilians. It'll definitely be different as they both need wins. Um, this would have been a game maybe last World Cup where I was going to feel good about Shakiri getting a goal for the Swiss as he's been wont to do in, in big moments for them or at least set something up and be involved. But I just don't he, he's much, much older at this point. I don't, I don't feel comfortable betting on him being able to really lead a counterattack, which is mostly what you're going to expect the Swiss to be able to do if they're going to score is counter and I just don't feel the same as I have in the past uh, about their ability to put a goal and that was obvious in this game against the Brazilians who they have tied in the World Cup twice past um, and they kept to one goal and they kept them to one goal this game but I do feel the Serbians averaging about three goals a game coming into uh, coming into the cup during qualifying I expected them to be able to put one in the back uh, of the net against the Brazilians and they were not able to that Brazilian defense looks incredible right now um, but they're, they haven't been tested and that's because the Swiss don't really move forward enough um, and so yeah, I would feel better about the, the the Serbians winning this game and definitely under two and a half goals, which if you can get, you know, close to even money without the win from Serbia, I feel good about that as well. Uh, so I'm going to hit some unders and hit that game for, for Serbia to come out in a low scoring one. Um, the other game of the, the group here, the Brazilians are already through, as we said, that that usually doesn't stop them from continuing to score goals and win uh, as they like to win all three uh, you know, matches in their group stage. Uh, Cameroon plus 750 on the money line there. Minus 270 for Brazil and a draw is plus 425. Uh, so where is it that we have to sort of uh, re really you know, peek and, and search for some value in this one? Um, I'll probably be starting with Brazil win and clean sheet. That starts at plus 120. I know Cameroon got three goals in their last game, but I feel, as you've just said, Brazil's defence is pretty much watertight. Well, it has been watertight in this World Cup, so I can't see them giving away much there. So I feel a win and a clean sheet is a good starting point. But at the same time, Brazil haven't really put anyone to the sword yet, have they? As we said, stale in that first 45 minutes against Serbia. Then they found those two goals. Then held for a long time against Switzerland and then finally found a winner. So they're not blowing teams away, but they are getting the job done. Now, does this mean that they're going to be true to form again and just sort of grind out a 1-0, 2-0, I don't know. Or are they going to absolutely fumble a team before the round of 16? So there's two schools of thought here. I'm yeah. personally going to go with the former and go with a Brazil win and under 2.5 goals at plus 260. But you could be tempted into like plus over, sorry, over 3.5 goals on its own at plus 175, for example. You know, if you say that Cameroon, they of course need a win to advance and they can't sort of sit back and go, well, do you know what? We'll just see if we can get them on the counter. They're going to have to come out quickly and see if they can really put Brazil under it. So I'm going to go for the continuation of the trend, but I wouldn't argue against if you were to say, actually, do you know what? I'm going to be going for lots of goals here. There are sort of two con con contrasting schools of thought here. Yeah. So it's really a case of which one you want, but I'm going to go with what Brazil have shown me as to where I'm going to go. And that's, once again, my exact thinking in terms of the, <laughs> the, the theory. It really is because my, what I don't want to have to bet on is 
do we think Brazil's going to bring it? Do we think Brazil's going to have the 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 not just the pride, but also uh, the the composure, um, right, and the professionalism to not lose it mentally, to stay mentally strong if they go up one or two nothing? And that would be my fear in taking under two and a half goals at plus money here, which I can find at plus one fifteen on the U.S. sports books for this to go under three goals. Um, I like that because I like the idea of a one or two nothing win for Brazil, probably closer to two nothing win for them, but. Like you said, and like I've said uh, the last couple of days as we've been recording towards the end of these group stage matches, believe what teams have told you in their first two matches, right? Yep. They're, they're going to consistently do what they've done as long as, you know, matchup pending. You have to look at some of some of that going into it. But for, for instance, uh, the Netherlands, we said they haven't done anything, you know, to, to make me think they can put three or four in the back of the net, even against the Qataris. Lo and behold, they win two nothing, right? They were fine with that. That's all they needed. Same concept uh, for, for a team like... Uh, uh, yesterday for the way, for the Welsh and the English. When the English play a team that they can break down and cannot break them down in any way, most importantly, as the Welsh were not able to do in, in either half, then you feel good about them putting a couple goals in the back of the net and not conceding any. And that was about what we expected, two or three nothing from the from the from the English in that game. Okay, we're back to this one. Brazil has won two nothing and one nothing. They've looked incredible on defense. They have had no lapses. There's really been very few and far between moments. There you go. Uh, you're, you're you sort of you get a little bit clenched. If you're a Brazil fan, right? There's nothing really making you nervous at any point in terms of the shots getting onto their keeper who hasn't been tested. So I, I think you just believe what they've been telling you and go under two and a half goals and them to win this game uh, with that with that as the theory once again. If, if to your point though, I'm not if I'm going over and if you do think there's going to be a lapse in judgment and you think there's three goals scored in this game. Plus, you know, minus 140 or, or so for over two and a half doesn't really get you much. So yeah. that's why it's like, for me, the odds are close to even uh, that this could go either way because it's dependent on human, uh, you know, sort of mental capacity at this point. Um, but I, I'll go ahead and, and, and take the better odds that, that, that they're going to continue to do what they've been doing, low scoring games uh, and winning with, with really solid defense. So. Uh, let's move on, Dan, to the the, uh, the early games, 7 a.m. here uh, on the Pacific Coast for this final group, which is very, very interesting. Uruguay and Ghana uh, are going to be at 7 a.m., same time, Portugal and South Korea. Uh, as always, please go ahead and give us the quick permutations of this one. Right, well, this one is a little simpler, but it might still be confusing at the same time, so I'll do my absolute best. So, Portugal are already through, and they can secure top spot with a win or a draw against Korea. Ghana can progress to the round 16 with a win over Uruguay. If Ghana and Uruguay draw, then as long as Korea don't beat Portugal, it would be Ghana who advance. Uruguay and Korea will lose, sorry, will go out if they lose or draw. Uruguay can still go through with a win if the Korean Republic don't beat Portugal. If both teams triumph, that being Uruguay and Korea, then second spot would be decided by a goal difference similar to Group G. So we know that Portugal are clear and they're going to almost get the job done. I can't see how that goes wrong, but we'll get to that in a moment. And Ghana, Uruguay, Korea have got it all to play for. And Ghana, Uruguay is going to be fascinating because if you remember 2010 South Africa, that Luis Suarez handball, the missed penalty, it's almost a playoff in the sense to get to the round 16. It's almost a rematch, that revenge. So, um, yeah, we'll get to that now, I guess, when you're going to throw it back to me. But I'm really, really excited about Ghana, Uruguay. I'm not going to make you wait. Uruguay is minus 140 on the money line. Ghana's plus 400. The draw plus 285. It's going to be madness and insanity. Uh, where do you look at to, to, for this one? I like the look of Ghana at plus 400. I think it's a great price because, as, I, as I've just sort of said, that revenge, they're not going to forget about 12 years ago. They were fantastic against South Korea. They made the sort of game a bit more difficult than it needs to be. I don't think 3-2 told the full story. That could have been clear, but they were definitely the best team. Against Portugal, you know, they were a slip away from getting a point and that would have been a fantastic start to the World Cup. So to just only have three points, but they've scored five, conceded five. You know, they've been one of the most refreshing, entertaining teams of this tournament so far. And no one's really kind of rated them. They've just kind of gone under the radar, gone about their business. And I feel that Uruguay haven't really offered anything, to be honest. I mean, they've been bitty against South Korea. They had a chance. Uh, Diego Godin's thumped the post with a header. Ben Tanker should have scored against Portugal in the first half. But apart from that, they've not really had anything. When you consider the likes of Darwin Nunes, Cavani, he he's, looks like an old striker now, doesn't he? Just, you know, put him out to pasture almost. Luis Suarez is always a threat, but the, the pieces haven't quite worked. And I just feel that Garner are just sort of come into this tournament and just thinking, do you know what? Let's just unleash the chaos. And I think it's exactly what's going to happen. A plus 400. I love it. 
Um, I, I, Uruguay has no goals in this tournament, which is wildly surprising, as you mentioned. Poor Cavani. I mean, Cavani has one of those faces that he's looked like he was 40 since he was 18. So now that he really is 40, he looks like he's 60. Uh, so he is he's getting on in age. Uh, but I would also say goals feel right. Why would I, once again, why would I not continue to believe that the Ghanaians uh, are who we think they are? They're, they're going to give up some lapses in, in the back. Um, and they're going to be very exciting going forward. Um, so over two and a half goals is even money in this game. That feels like a steal. I don't even need to yeah. pick the win. Uh, I think this is uh, Uruguay's hit seven posts in this game. Like they can't go goalless again, right? Um, meanwhile, the Ghanaians have five goals in two games. So to me, over two and a half is easy money. If you feel bold, over three and a half is plus two, four, five. Uh, over here, about two and a half to one on your money. Once again, if you think the Uruguayans are able are, are, are going to play. Uh, offensively as we think they are capable of, then why would you not expect them to put at least one goal in the back of the net, if not two? I'll stick with the over two and a half and just go ahead and keep like sort of feeling good about my my my, my bets in this one right now because I've been hitting... I've, I've sort of stopped going quite as far into the three to one uh, and finding some things using some of the stuff that we can bank on, having seen a couple matches in this World Cup. Um, so like I said, believe what these teams are telling you through the first two, except for Ghana, or excuse me, except for Uruguay, believe that what they've been telling you, which is we are so close to scoring so consistently that we have to, the odds are we have to just get one in the back of the net as we've had so many on goal. So uh, the other match uh, that will be starting at this time, as you said, Portugal all the way through already, they're looking to win the group with at least a draw. Uh, South Korea needs a win, cannot afford a draw as well. So um, yeah, I, I guess, do, do you think that this game opens up in a way uh, that allows Portugal, who's looked fantastic, fa absolutely fantastic on the attack, do, maybe the best team on the attack that I've watched so far. Do you feel, uh, you, you know, there's any value in minus 150 for Portugal to have this, the, the chutzpah, if you will, to win the game? Uh, the draw is plus 330 or South Korea to surprise us with a plus 380 victory? I think it all depends on who scores first, really. If South Korea can score first, then that's going to open the game up, make it much more exciting. I know Portugal are through, so it's a question of appetite. We've seen yeah. France just an, an hour or so ago um, stumble against Tunisia and you feel to yourself, well, okay, well, they are through, they've done their job, so you can kind of understand why. Maybe that's the same energy that comes out of Portugal. But at the same time, why not carry on the momentum? Why not be one of the few teams that could get nine points in the group stage and really sort of uh, make a statement in terms of yeah. their World Cup rivals? So, you know, South Korea have been disappointing. Human Sun definitely disappointing in terms of the tournament. So maybe he can put the nation on his back and at least go some way to try and get him into second place. That's going to have to come with a goal. So any time for Human Song is plus 220. Again, you can't really look past Ronaldo when it comes to any time market. He's still moaning about the fact that the ball did or didn't touch his head against Uruguay. But he can right that wrong by scoring against South Korea. Plus 120 any time. I like the look of plus 350 to start the scoring. If that is the case, then that's probably going to be the shutters coming down. So you're looking at, I don't know, a 2-0 win. But if South Korea get the first goal, I would probably go as big as over 3.5 goals in total. And you can get that at plus 200. I dig it. I do. Uh, in this one, it's kind of a situation where, uh, I, like you said, who scores first? But yeah. the way I see it, um, this is a great double chance with the with the total kind of bet, um, which I, I enjoyed betting yesterday in that USA game. As I told you earlier, the US to win or tie and under three goals in that game felt pretty good. Um, just just based on the fact that you know it, I thought that the US would get at least one goal, and then it was just a matter of are they going to give up that second goal, which is exactly how it played out, and they did not uh, to the to, to, to our all of our happiness. Portugal has slightly less on the line, but I think there's a bigger gap in how much better they are than the South Koreans versus how much better, um, you know, the, the U.S. team was than the Iranians, which was not that much. I mean, they're better for sure, um, but not so much so in terms of the, the gap between Portugal and South Korea. The, all that said, I like Portugal win or draw as that double chance. Um, and I would even, if you want to get a little bit more uh, feisty on it, I would go under like three and a half goals. I know it's not uh, nearly as sexy, but just get the guarantee that there's not some weird outpouring of goals. Um, and you can still get that at plus, at plus 105, plus 110, depending where you find it. Portugal win or draw double chance with uh, uh, under th uh, three and a half goals. Or you could do it on over two and a half goals, actually slightly better odds as well there. Um, as you know, we haven't seen much off 
offensively from the South Koreans to make us feel that good uh, about them being able to score on a Portugal uh, defense that outside of, uh, you know, outside of the Ghanaians just bringing it to them in the last 25 minutes of the game has looked absolutely incredible as well. So that is all the time we have in this one, Dan. It has been another fun day uh, talking about these last day of group stages uh, matches. Next up, we're going to be talking about the round of 16. Yeah, and, and I'm assuming we're pretty excited for that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll be taking a look at some of those matchups coming at you, as we said, every day of this World Cup with videos. So continue to follow along by liking and subscribing. Go and head, head to thelines.com so you can get all the stuff that we're talking about here in written form from Dan uh, as well. And until we see you next, happy betting. <laughs>